Oxytocin is not produced in the orgasm, and science shows it. You may have seen information everywhere in the media. Studies show that orgasms release oxytocin, the so-called love hormone that increases bonding, affection, and also has a lot of other well-being effects. I will break down today all the studies that the media and the bloggers quote as reference and evidence that oxytocin is produced in the orgasm. I will demonstrate to you that those studies do not show that oxytocin is produced by the orgasm. While there are many studies that show that oxytocin is increased during generally sexual activity, something that I support myself. There are only four studies that look at release of oxytocin specifically during the orgasm. And only these four studies will ever be referred to as evidence that oxytocin is released uh, during the orgasm. The first study shows that most oxytocin is produced before the orgasm. It also shows correlation and not causation. It doesn't establish whether orgasms actually release oxytocin or the increase in oxytocin during sex induces the orgasm. In the second study, I will show you that even if we assume that some increase in the oxytocin is actually caused by the orgasm, all of that increase is lost at most 10 minutes later. And there even remains a possibility that you would have kept more of it if you didn't have an orgasm. The third study shows that in some cases orgasms actually deplete your normal level of oxytocin to levels lower than before sex. And the fourth study shows conclusively that all of the oxytocin during sex is not produced in the orgasm. And the orgasm has nothing to do with it at all. So make sure you stay for that final study. Look, there are no other studies that are ever referenced. Whenever you see an article or an expert or a blogger stating that oxytocin is released in the orgasm, and none of them give that evidence, as I will show you. All these four studies are publicly available, and if you don't believe my analysis, you can go and look at them yourself. So before I analyze those studies for you, why does it matter? It's a very important piece of media misinformation to debunk, because it has huge practical consequences for your sex life. When I say orgasms are not that important, I get arguments from people who say, but, you know, orgasms produce oxytocin. It's very important to have oxytocin. You are mistaken. If you think like this and oxytocin is important to you, then the orgasm shouldn't be your focus. It won't give you your oxytocin and you need to focus on where the oxytocin is actually produced, which is the whole of lovemaking before the orgasm. Now, a quick word. Why do you see everywhere that oxytocin is produced in the orgasms if there are no studies that actually show it. First, this is a common bias in the design of sex studies. Often, all benefits of sex are simply assumed to be due to the orgasm and not from the rest of sex. This is a deeply ingrained cultural bias. As a result, studies are not designed to isolate the orgasm. They often measure the benefit of the entire sex, which includes the orgasm, but then they attribute all that benefit only to the orgasm. Secondly, even when the researchers do design and interpret a study correctly, you don't get the information from the source study. You get it from a media article reporting it or bloggers who are reporting the media article secondhand. And the media often cherry picks a fact, which is meaningless without the rest of the picture, to make it sexy and sensationalist. Technically accurate, but not really accurate. And then repeated via many channels, it becomes a scientific fact. This is why it's important to not believe somebody who says studies show and to analyze the source study, the design, the data, the interpretation, the alternative explanations. So the one referred to most commonly is this study by Carmichael et al. So this study involved both men and women masturbating. The researchers measured the oxytocin that was produced before the orgasm and then at the orgasm two minutes after and five minutes after. In women, they found that pretty much 95% of the total increase in oxytocin happened before the orgasm. And actually, after the orgasms, the levels of oxytocin dropped to below where they were before the orgasm, suggesting that orgasms caused the lowering of the levels of oxytocin. And this trend could have hypothetically gone on, uh, lowering oxytocin further and further. But there was only a very short time, five minutes after the orgasm, when it was measured. In men, they found that about 50% of increase in oxytocin happened before the orgasm, and only the other 50% of increase happened at the orgasm and five minutes after. However, there are limitations to this data. First, we know that a lot of oxytocin is produced in the intimate contact between the bodies, a huge source of oxytocin that was lacking here because these people were masturbating. So in real sex, interacting with a partner, the increase in oxytocin before the orgasm could have been much higher, and the ratio of increase before the orgasm and after the orgasm could have been 
not 50-50, but perhaps 80 to 20 or 90 to 10. Secondly, this study showed correlation, not causation. It did not show that orgasms increase oxytocin. Hypothetically, it could also mean that the levels of oxytocin were increasing during the stimulation and higher levels of oxytocin induce the orgasm. And that theory does exist in scientific circles. So in that case, oxytocin would be producing the orgasm, not the orgasm producing oxytocin. Third, we know that brain chemistry after the orgasm is a very long event that can go on for hours or even days. Five minutes after the orgasm is a very short time that doesn't tell us what actually happens to the levels of oxytocin as a result of an orgasm. And the second study that I will analyze actually shows us that 30 minutes later it drops completely to zero to the baseline before sex. So all oxytocin produced during sex is lost after the orgasm. I want to reiterate that 90% of the time when you see information online that orgasms produce oxytocin, this is the study that is quoted. And yet the researchers never said that in the study. They only said oxytocin increases during sexual arousal and oxytocin levels are higher during the orgasm, not due to the orgasm, but during the orgasm, correlation, not causation, than before sex. So every report you've seen that stated that this study has showed that oxytocin is produced in the orgasm said something that researchers didn't actually say and simply lied. The second most frequently quoted study is this study by Murphy et al. Also with men and the oxytocin was measured only at the baseline before the stimulation and at the moment of orgasm. So while we do see a much higher level of oxytocin at the moment of orgasm, that includes all the oxytocin produced during the stimulation. But for some strange reason, the research said that this study demonstrates the marked increase of oxytocin at the moment of ejaculation but not during arousal while they didn't actually measure oxytocin during the stimulation so they simply attributed all the increase of oxytocin to the orgasm while it could have come from the stimulation which is shown by the previous study and this was then reported by the media as a study that proves that oxytocin is produced in the orgasm importantly the study showed that if we give it more time after the orgasm unlike the previous study of only five minutes and we measure 10 minutes and 30 minutes later we see that all the increase in oxytocin that happened during sex is lost it's completely gone begging the question did the orgasm actually make us lose all the gains from oxytocin and even if it's technically correct that some oxytocin can be produced at the orgasm it is insignificant if the same orgasm then wipes out those gains and we would have to have a control group where men stimulate increase oxytocin but then don't come to see if the results would be different a study that hasn't been done but there's a lot of anecdotal observation that people retain more of that oxytocin like feel after sex if they don't ejaculate so unfortunately the media cherry-picked that technicality that some oxytocin is in increased at the orgasm, even though all of it is lost. And they presented it as orgasms increase oxytocin. The third study that comments on orgasms and oxytocin is by Blaischer et al. I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. It actually shows us that orgasms are potentially detrimental to oxytocin. In the sample of 12 women, all of them had an increase in oxytocin one minute after the orgasm. However, the picture was different five minutes after. Now here again, the orgasm wasn't isolated. That increase at the orgasm could have come before the orgasm. This wasn't measured. And we see from the first study that 95% of oxytocin was produced in the first study before the orgasm. But anyway, even if the orgasm increased oxytocin here, that is just a technicality. Because what's important is what happens after as a result of the orgasm. Only 5 out of 12 women had a further increase in oxytocin as a result of an orgasm. For 3 out of 12 women, their oxytocin level started dropping, still higher than at the beginning. But again, 5 minutes is a short time. And if we measure it 30 minutes later, it might have dropped much further, wiping out the gains of oxytocin during sex. For 4 out of 12, the orgasm resulted in their oxytocin levels dropping lower than the baseline, lower than where they started, meaning they would have been better off on oxytocin if they didn't have sex with an orgasm at all. So this suggests a great variation among women, that some women might have an increase in oxytocin as a result of an orgasm, some women might lose all of the oxytocin they produced during sex and they would have been better off not having an orgasm and keeping that oxytocin, and some women experience an oxytocin low below their baseline. And the fourth study by Caruso et al. studied two groups of women, orgasmic and anorgasmic women. They were having sex during the study and the levels of oxytocin was measured. The level of oxytocin in the orgasmic women was much higher. However, within that group there were two subgroups. 
All of these women were orgasmic, but half of them had an orgasm during the study and the other half didn't because they felt weird having an orgasm while being observed. There was no difference in their oxytocin levels, suggesting that all of the oxytocin was produced during the lovemaking and the women who did have an orgasm in this group didn't have any extra increase due to the orgasm. The lower levels of oxytocin in the anorgasmic women are very easy to explain in this study. They might have seen themselves as dysfunctional in the study, feeling negative or stressed about the orgasm, not relaxing, not enjoying sex and not producing the oxytocin during sex. This is conclusive proof that oxytocin is not produced in the orgasm. Surprisingly, the researchers concluded oxytocin levels increased in women having an orgasm. I can only contribute it to the complete inability to let go of the dogma that all the benefits of sex must come from an orgasm. There simply can't be any other reality. And even looking at the clear data, they simply cannot consider it. Now, I wonder if I'm going to get some comments that also simply refuse to believe it because it shakes the foundation of what you need to believe in. But the thing is, that belief is detrimental to you. It robs you of a really great sex life. And in the next video, I will explain what does all the science mean? What are the implications for your sex life and what you need to be doing?